get on some big bucks today. Mm-hmm. I'll get on a track with big bucks and they work out today. Welcome to another episode of the Adirondack Bucks and Beyond podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Stagger Gear. If you haven't yet, make sure you head on over to the Stagger Gear website where you'll find everything from their wool tracker jacket, their Apex Merino base layers, and even their 100% rag wool gloves and much more. Everything you need to keep you dry, warm, and comfortable for a long day's adventure in the woods. Be sure to enter our promo code ABB with any purchase made on the Stagger Gear website to get 10% off your order. That's promo code ABB for 10% off your order all at www.staggergear.com. Hey, what's up, guys? I am just getting done editing this podcast you guys are about to listen to right now. Um, I just wanted to jump on here and give a huge thank you to uh, Ben and Brian for joining us for this one. Uh, We've been really looking forward to this podcast, as we'll say, and um, it it did not disappoint. Um, Came out great, other than one thing, which I wanted to jump on here and address. Uh, If you guys are watching this video on YouTube, you're going to see that one of our cameras is popping in and out of focus. Completely my fault. Um, you know, I set up the whole entire thing. We have to bring all the stuff there, uh, set all the audio recording, recording stuff up, set all the cameras up, make sure they're in focus, make sure they're in the right spot. And I forgot to switch the focus on the camera that's facing Brad and I. So it's going to sit there and pop in and out, and it's super annoying. I tried keeping it off us as much as possible. Um, and anyways, Ben had a really cool background with all the giant bucks. And stay tuned at the end of this video, um, or at the end of this podcast, because after we're done talking, I take some shots of Ben's uh, man cave with all of his bucks and uh, share some pictures that he sent to us um, that we wanted to put in the podcast and are super, super cool. So... With that being said, that's all I wanted to address. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as we did. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. All right, guys, welcome back to the Adirondack Bucks and Beyond podcast. Today we're sitting here with Ben Secor. Um, This is a podcast we've really been looking forward to doing for probably about a year and a half now. Yep, ever Um, since we started getting into the big woods, Ben's pictures were – actually, I remember seeing Ben's pictures online before – all this stuff took off, and a lot of times I would actually see him on um, 80K Hunter that Dan mm-hmm. Ladd does out of Fort Ann. Yep. Yep. And I remember it always said, Bed Secor from Remsen. <laughs> yeah. And, and it I, was always big hog box. I had no idea who you were, and then Brad's like, look at this Ben Secor guy. He's shooting big bucks every <laughs> single year. And uh, so since then, we wanted to sit down and talk with you, and appreciate you sitting down with us today. Yeah, yeah so. that'll be fun. And we, got, uh, and we got to meet Ben for the first time last year. Yeah, he was, we were talking about Yeah, just such a nice guy. Then. Yeah. Yep. So. so, yeah, it all worked out today. We're in the area, and here we are. We're going to have lots of yep. stories, as you guys could probably see. In the in the room around us, there's big butts, big bucks and elk and mule deer all over the walls. So, yeah. <laughs> lots, lots of stories. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of jump right in. Do you want to start with his buck from this year? Yeah, we, uh, we'll tell some buck stories along the way because we, we would like to hear about the buck he <laughs> shot this year because he's a good one. We actually got to put our hands on him when we first got here, yep. too. So. Yeah, I actually moved him over here. That's oh, beautiful. Perfect, right in the camera view. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a buck that um, we had pictures of for a few years. I'd kind of forgotten about him because we only got, like, one picture, and it wasn't great. You yeah. know, I was pretty sure he was still alive, but last year he was a real, you know – taller tines yep. actually um but he's no slouch now i don't think he's oh so he went downhill I, yeah the really? tines were longer um definitely last year boy but the mass on him is yeah that's that's a beautiful buck yeah. so it was like the second day that we had um <clears throat> track and snow um the first day we got like an inch um real packy stuff during the day um i did uh I guess that day I had gone out over by my tree stand, just kind of looking for tracks. One tree stand is like three and a half miles from the tent. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to head that way and see what I cut for tracks. Cut a couple tracks that were um, like decent buck tracks. But I'd seen a couple bucks out by the tree stand in that same country that Mm -hmm. I'd actually let go. And uh, so I was, I followed one a little ways. I saw a cow moose um, that day and the, tracks were you know snow was coming down as i was following it and i kind of got mixed up anyways 
and they were going in towards where the moose was and I didn't really want to bother her and kind of going towards the private land too so I the other thing I didn't tell you once I got out to my tree stand I had service so I'm checking my I've got a cell cam there sure, at that sure. stand yeah I've got another one two and a half miles away as a crow flies so I look on the uh, checking the, the, the app pictures yeah. you know that's first I've and I've got a, a great big buck on camera we'd had the night before like just before dark he was back there 7 15 in the morning oh no kidding and um he has like stickers off his g2s and stuff <laughs> yeah. too yeah and so i'm like well you know do i mess around here do i go back there and i'm like well i'm gonna straight line it go back there i know what that track is if i can sort it out you know and i figured maybe there's a hot dough around there so you figured you'd already stepped over his track no i think um no i hadn't he had gone in and and checked it was kind of the different direction from the tent um so i ended up going back there i got back there it's like 1 30 2 o'clock i went over a mountain to get there i kind of hunted my way back i wasn't really on a mission to get there because the track was from the morning and i wasn't sure i could sort it out anyways yeah. sure and i actually going over top of the mountain was the st straightest route and i hadn't been up on it yet so i went up there i got up on top and um I started seeing a couple deer tracks. I grunted and, um, a few times and um, nice little six-pointer, no brow tines, comes around and stands there. <laughs> I could have shot him with my bow. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I just stopped in the right spot, and he was 50 yards bedded from me. And he had a doe with him, too. I didn't see her, but he came around. There's enough crunch in the snow. I could hear something coming, and I had the gun up. And yeah. I always wanted to shoot one on top of a mountain. I think I was telling you that. Yeah, last yeah. year and i never have sure and, which is uh, going to lead into something we want to talk yeah, about later yeah, but yeah. so um so i let him go and um i go down find the track from the morning on this beaver dam crossing where my camera is and it went in and it's all snowed in and he went just a little ways and there's tracks all over he, he was dogging does around but mm -hmm. snow and the uh, filled all the tracks up so i tried to make a half circle and i did get a fresher track ended up tracking i think a small buck um, yep. i had blowing at me i don't think it was him um so ended up getting dark i never did get a look at the deer my buddy rick was on the other side of this like beaver flow he saw a big rack buck um chasing a doe and um couldn't get a shot at it the doe came out in the trail and he's got the gun up. It's like 70 yards, and he's just waiting for the buck to step out following. He never stepped out. Oh, wow. And um, so <laughs> that was – this is the day prior. So overnight we are supposed to get snow, and we did get another inch or two of snow. And um, and not to interrupt, so, but you, you guys are up at tent camp, right? And yeah. How, how yeah. far in is your tent camp? We're six miles in. Okay. Wow. So okay. we push deer carts in. It's, right. Uh, yeah, it's, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that too, but yeah. I just wanted to set the precedence that you were yeah. you were six miles in at yeah. tent camp. Yeah, I'd been in there for a few days. You had gone out. It oh, was – we went in after Thanksgiving, Brian and I, um, Rick and Kevin. No, Kevin didn't go in yet, but uh, I was tracked no, a different – Rick wasn't in yet. When you had gotten your deer Saturday, yeah, and we'd taken it out Sunday. So Monday was the day I was talking about where I, right, you know, yeah, we had the the big one on camera. Yep. And it wasn't wasn't him, yeah. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so the that night Rick sees the big rack buck mm -hmm. on the other side of the flow ground, and sure. I had had one on my side that I think was smaller bucks so we're like we're gonna go back there in the morning mm -hmm. he was gonna go back the around the one side and i was gonna go the other and um so i'm i'm he goes around he's left camp before i did um and i came up and around and um i'm getting almost to my camera and uh happen to have service yeah and it starts dinging and on my phone and i'm looking i got three does going across towards like rick's way and um so i'm i keep going over there and i'm not there yet and ding 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 i got i got them coming back looks like the yeah. same ones and at this point i'm not that far from, and it's open hardwoods so i i've just like plant myself and sure enough i see it was either three or four does um come out 
and uh, they so they had gone in and come back for some reason. Right. So I Rick didn't know where my camera was. He'd never been right to it. So I'm like, I'll. I told him kind of where it was. We went and uh, met up at my camera. Double check that quick because I wanted to the big one from two days before. Yep. They had the stickers and stuff, yeah. and I wanted to get the other pictures because those cell cams only send one. Yeah, sure. and they're all pics- and they're picture all out of the three because yeah. I got it, to, you know, set to take three. Yeah. So we get there and it's just the does, but we got better pictures of the the like non typical buck. There. Is that a new buck that you've never seen before? Yeah, he, he just showed up. Yeah, like interesting. Um, so the day before in the morning, the n- night before that daylight. Um, and we've got pictures of them since, so maybe next year, mm. right, maybe you'll right. move right in. We'll, we'll be seeing another big <laughs> buck on another big yeah. yeah, yeah. Here we go, Ben. Try another one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Rick, all the way around, hadn't seen a single fresh track, you know, of anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, let's go back and see what the where these deer went to. Right. And um, so we followed it back. And I'm like, I'm surprised. You know, they must have smelled you or something. So we follow them all the way back, and um, their tracks are start running and um, you know back towards the dam. But we're still following the old tracks where they go out. Well, they had gone up and they had hit Rick's track, and um, spooked and run back. Wow! Just by hitting his track, uh, is, that's ground interesting. Sound. Well, on the other side, this is a pretty good crossing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually a migration trail that they use in the winter. Yep. Um, so on the other side where Rick had gone, um, there's more tracks that aren't running. So they're coming. There's like a, a few tracks coming down. In one of those, there was a big track in the runway. And I'm like, I don't know if this went back with the does or where off. it went, you know, because yeah. there's enough running tracks. We couldn't keep it straight. But sure. there's one that went the opposite way. So what happened is they had come down the mountain <clears throat> and hit Rick's track, or they had all come together there and, they both went back the way they came. But yeah. this one big, looked like the biggest track there was running. And I'm like, I'm going to get on that. Um, I'm like, Rick, you know, go back. Just make sure we didn't just push something out of this little piece. So he goes back and I start on that track. And I could tell, I was pretty sure I had the right, you know, a, a good buck track yeah. there. And we figured it was the non-typical one. Right. right. So he goes back to this old gravel bed area and, um, no tracks coming out so i sent him back around and he this track is going like side hill and on the mountain and are you guys communicating by radio yeah okay yeah we don't usually normally we kind of do our own thing but we kind of decided we'd go to the same area So you guys had usually had a tent and just literally go to your own area yeah everybody kind of does their own Mm -hmm. yep thing that's if somebody the, shoots we get together get turn the radios on but i hardly ever have my that was radio exactly on. How, basically how we hunted out yeah. town camp too yeah, but it sounds like this situation sets up good to try and work together on this yeah. day yeah but he was moving he was cruising like he ran quite a ways and he got up on the side of the mountain and i'm sending rick down and around where i'm thinking he's gonna go there's like another mountain and a little saddle and i was trying i sent him around there and he ended up crossing the deer's track on the way that there was some other tracks yeah. that had come up in that on that same mountain, and uh, so this this track bounced around on that side hill. There was deer in there feeding mm-hmm. on ferns and stuff. But I get up on this knob, and um, I could see like up to the top of the mountain in front of me. It's just like a beautiful spot i can mm-hmm. see like 150 yards which is a long ways sure. oh, and yeah. i can see the track going off to the left this big one that i'm on by now it's like walking and stuff but i could just see so good and i figured he could have could be up on top and uh so i i had awesome luck grunting in bucks this year yeah mm-hmm. and uh so i stopped there and i'm like i'm just gonna grunt and see what happens i grunt a couple times and um off to my right up on the hill here comes this deer and i can see horns i got the gun up and he's coming pretty good you know yeah. not like at a trot but he's had it right you got me. a good look at his rack as he's coming down or no <laughs> it looked like it, it, oh, my first reaction was like it was an eight pointer or something yeah and um he looked pretty good then he got closer i'm like ah, i'm not sure you know and then he he comes down and he hits before he hit that track um he uh I could tell he wasn't anything I wanted to shoot. He ended up yeah. just being a big wide crotch. Oh, okay, short. so it wasn't okay. All yeah. Right. So he, but he comes down and he hits the track of the deer that I'm on, and he sticks his nose in it and he spooks and runs back like 20 yards the way he came and really? stands there. 
And so he knows I, who that is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking. I'm. They've I think I'm on, Yeah, I think I'm on a pretty good. Wow. That's also a good that, point. That's yeah. really really cool that you picked that <laughs> and, up. And yeah. I've never seen that you know happen before. Yeah, but like but that. That's what would make sense in the situation. Like this little scrub buck probably would have gone right over my head. I'd have been like, yeah, all right, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, winded me. Yeah. He stood there um, for like ten minutes. Just brought. I could have shot him a dozen times. Sure. And um, so. He, I just let him walk off there, and but it looked like so when that that big one with the stickers went through, I had a crotch horn. I think it was him. Yeah. Like a minute behind him, the one afternoon. So I'm still thinking I'm on why. this non-typical yeah. thing. Um. So, anyways, I get on the track. They go up on the side hill. He's sniffing doe tracks where they're feeding on the ferns, and he's kind of side hill and going towards where I'd sent Rick, and um. All of a sudden, he kind of, like, turns and heads down, crosses the trail that Rick had gone around on to get yep. in, try to get in front of him. And um, actually, we were texting because uh, we had service up sure, on that side hill. Sure. For some reason, we've had a lot better service in there this past year than hmm. we ever did before. Um, but it's still spotty. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So I told Rick on the radio, you know, we he'd already been through. He's like, yeah, he said, I saw that track on the way up. Mm-hmm. It was, it wasn't too far from where I'd sent him, but it, so from there it goes down this real thick swamp, and I'm like, you know, you can try to get around, mm-hmm. you know, but I don't know, sure, right, where to send you really. Yeah. So he's like, well, I think I'm just gonna do my own thing, and um, so I I stay on it. Go it takes me down a thick spruce swamp, and um, there's a big like river you know stream something you can't get across there yeah. these kind of parallel and i'm hoping he's not going to cross that because i i could get around on it take you if he though. did but it'd be a little um a little bit of a jaunt it'd be, it'd be a nice adventure <laughs> for you yeah <laughs> I, you'd have to swim most places <laughs> to get across yeah there. so he kind of went down he paralleled that and he's headed back towards our tent actually and um what we call um, the black forest but it's across the water so he, he goes down in, there's a, another like feeder stream to that main stream. He gets down in that and that's all like, you know, just sure. thick, thick alders. Oh yeah. And you know, I'm not trying to be quiet. I'm just kind of barreling through <clears throat> yeah. there and I can see that he's, uh, you know, I knew he was a ways ahead of me anyways at that point. Cause he had b- just bounced around on that side of the mountain. He hadn't wasted any time he had right. fat or rubbed mm-hmm. a tree or anything. Big track on him or average Pretty track? good. He yeah. looked about the same as that that one uh that 11 pointer from two years ago actually mm-hmm. you know the pretty rounded in the front yeah and yep. a good track but not like a monster track on sure it. right it was like a three finger track i'd yep. say maybe okay. a little bigger yep and um but yeah he was by himself um went down into the through all those alders i fought my way through those and um he comes to this feeder stream and it's kind of like um that one you don't really want to cross either there's very few places where you can cross mm-hmm. it but it's there's like shell ice on top of it so it's just <clears throat> skimmed over with ice yeah yeah maybe a half an inch or something right and they don't like to cross ice when it's yeah. like that um, yeah because it's you know 25 feet across it just kind of meanders down through there sure um not fast moving so he gets out in that and the grass and stuff and i can see both ways good um I didn't figure he'd be out there anyways, but, uh, so he starts paralleling it. I just stayed on his track and, uh, I'm like, you know, hopefully he crosses in a good spot or I got to go back up right. um, and around to get around. So, um, uh, he goes out and, uh, all of a sudden I can see some open water up there and it was an old beaver dam and I could, but there's only like a couple sticks, you know, yep. sticking yep. up there yep. and the water it was just moving enough there that there was no ice. And uh, so he went up and crossed there, and I'm looking it over, and I've got my um, those crispy boots on. They're like 12 inch. Yeah. And yep. Um, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, boy, I don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I want to be wet the rest of the yeah. day. Yeah. So, but I'm like, man, yeah, I might as well go for it. I'm not that far from the tent. If I get wet, I can go back. I got another right. pair of boots and yep. get dried off. So uh, I just slung my rifle and i just kind of ran across and i could see a little stick here a little stick there and you know it looked like it was six inches deep yeah you never know if you're going to go up to your waist on the next step Absolutely. but i made it across there and i don't think i got even over my my boots but i didn't waste any time 
getting across. Yeah. So we crossed that. The other side, the same thing. Alders for quite a ways, and then what we call the Black Forest, just spruce swamp. Nobody goes in it. It's like dark, dark all day long. Yeah. You know, the sun never shines in there. Yeah. Sure, sure. So I'm thinking he's going to go across that, and on the other side, there's some nice humps and and um, you know hardwoods and stuff. I'm thinking he's just going to go across that and go back looking for does. Well, he gets in that Black Forest and he starts feeding, and um, we had, so the snow we got the night before, it had cooled down, so there's like an inch yeah. of like heavy, wet stuff, and yeah. then it froze, and mm-hmm. then we got two inches of fresh powder on top, so it was crunchy, but it was insulated by that top layer, right. um, and in that thick stuff, I knew I wasn't going to walk up on mm-hmm. them, you know, because you can only see 20, 30 yards, right. you know, at the right. best, so um, my idea was to try to gun them back to me just Mm -hmm. sneak along you know he's going to hear me coming most likely and um hopefully he thinks i'm another deer i'll go see if i can draw him back to me and so So you thought you were fairly close to him once you saw the feed when he started feeding Mm -hmm. i'm like yeah this is pretty textbook you know he's eating on the old man's beard and stuff Mm -hmm. and he was taking shorter steps and kind of meandering a little bit yeah and um so i i started on the grunt tube i'd go like 100 yards grunt three four times um sat there like you know stand there just a minute or two you know listen real close it was a little windy yeah so i think i had that in my favor um so i snuck down through there and i picked this track up at 8 30 and by now it's like 11 or something 11 30 and um i went quite a ways doing that going real slow I'd probably been a mile and a half at this point on him and um, still wasn't sure what he was going to do, but I figured he might, you know, likely to be bedded in there. Right. And um, so, I don't know how many times, a dozen times I grunted maybe, and I'd go another 100 yards <clears throat> grunting, you know. Sure, so really, you're taking your you're time. Taking you're real, taking it real. Yeah, I was time. going real slow. I stopped and ate my lunch in there. I was getting hungry usually don't make it till noon to I gotta eat <laughs> me either sandwich yeah. <laughs> and um so i ate my lunch i think i went a little ways further grunted like one more time and then he started going into like real thick stuff where you couldn't even see yeah. 10 yards mm-hmm. and uh, so i didn't grunt and i went i don't know probably 150 200 yards from there and in the thickest shithole in there uh, I come to his bed and a mm-hmm. running track going out of it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know right. if he, he probably didn't hear me. I don't think I had grunted yeah. close enough where he would have heard me. And um, so I'd already eaten my sandwich. I'm like, I should give him time. You know, that's hell blood. So let's give him a half an hour, right. which <laughs> I don't think I had to do because, um, but I did. I guess I ate my apple or a candy bar or yeah, something. Sure. It's yeah. like, look at your watch. It's yeah. like, must you be felt half an hour by now. It's like ten minutes, you know. <laughs> but you felt you felt he'd probably already had a little time on you, anyways. It, yeah, yeah. yeah I, whether you had taken a break or not, he probably. Yeah, already had I a figured time. I was getting. I figured I gained on him because he was feeding quite a bit. Sure. So I kind of figured I got him up early from his nap, mm-hmm. and uh, so he took off out of there. I started going kind of slow, thinking you know, seeing if he would start feeding again. I you know slow the pace down but he kind of lined right out of there and um so i kind of picked up the pace and uh started going i don't know i guess i went about a mile i crossed like the trail that rick had walked in on um in the morning went up where i'd uh, monday had had that deer blowing yep. at me um, went in there figured he might hang around in there and uh, he didn't really he just kind of lined through there to sniff a couple if he'd come to a deer track he'd sniff it get fall it down a little ways and get off it and just keep going yeah and so he went up across the trail <laughs> i'd gone in on on the morning um still moving pretty fast hardwoods up the mountain side of the mountain and uh kind of off the other side and uh all the way along there, he didn't really, I wasn't like stopping. I didn't think I was right behind him. I, I'd given him half an hour and he hadn't really. So you were moving really again broke. at this point. I was moving yeah. pretty good, but still not, I wasn't just, you know. Right. I, I knew I was going to catch him again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just a matter of when and where, you yep. know. Yep. And uh, they crossed another trail that we, uh, kind of down the other side of this other mountain. And um, 
he crossed that and he started slowing down he followed and came to another deer track and followed assuming a doe followed that a little bit more like he was more interested in that one but then he peeled off that and he goes down and he hits this big <clears throat> signpost rub mm-hmm. that i'd never found before and yep. it, it like wise off and the one the one was like the side of my thigh and the smaller one was you know the size of my arm but they yeah. split apart so you know and he could, he had just touched it but you could tell he got because there were only a couple of little right bark shavings it. on the um on the ground and and um, now you're really fired up <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm like yeah this is definitely a good buck you know <laughs> and then he goes just like 20 yards and he rubs this little tree but he rubbed that one pretty hard bark all over yeah. the snow yeah and uh, Where, was it was his tine marks like a good ways up it or did it just kind of look at like an average it, it didn't look super high or anything yeah. you hmm. know um and like the signpost one he just barely touched right. it you know, just knocked enough you know, I think he dug his brow tine in it and mm-hmm. just did one little thing on right. it. And then, for whatever reason, he went and rubbed that smaller tree. But it was a pretty good, you know, gnarly looking yeah. rub. Still, yeah. it was only two inch tree, maybe inch and a half. Mm-hmm. And um, so at that point, I'm like, you know, this is a good buck. I'm gonna, sure. you know, I've invested Neat. enough time wise, yeah. you know, and it's mm-hmm. getting late in the season. If he's got a rack, I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> now, him. what time is it when you when you run into that? What time of that day, was you know? um that was probably 130 somewhere in there okay and how uh, far are you from the tent at this point not that far like he kind of did like almost a figure eight type thing yeah yeah you know and, but i had gone kind of past the tent when he crossed the last <clears throat> couple trails he started going away from the yeah. tent again and uh goes down in the swamp and um there's a nice knob in there remember we went in I told you about that knob by that big rub. We had we had a different buck on camera that we thought might be hanging on that one knob. Yeah, and we had checked it out and we saw the moose tracks in there. Oh, yeah. You remember? There's just a cow moose had gone so. through there. There's old rubs and stuff, but it looked like nothing fresh had been hanging yeah. there. So he he starts heading for that, and <clears> um, <throat> you know I knew where I was, and I thought he might stop on that knob so he started feeding again after he rubbed the tree and hit that doe track he had another track that he kind of followed for a little bit but then he started feeding and he's headed towards that knob and i'm thinking you know that might be a place where he would right. lay again so yeah. i started as soon as he started feeding again though really i started grunting mm-hmm. and uh doing what i was before yeah. yeah give it you know two minutes go again keep going and um went up and over that knob he had fed up there and he kind of just walked over that didn't really stop crosses another trail um actually the one that we come in uh, to the tent on but beyond where we cut off it and um down in the swamp like kind of where he'd been where i jumped him before you know thicker spruce swamp and stuff and he started feeding quite a bit more in there so i really slowed down and i was probably that last half a mile or something i probably probably took me an hour Mm -hmm. yeah or more to go that yeah and um so i don't know how many times i grunted and waited you know two minutes but it felt like eternity probably it was probably 20 times or something it at that point and i'd done it you know a dozen times it feels like it feels like you'd been there all day doing it It, (laughs) when you were creeping that slow Yeah. yeah and um pretty much all day once he kind of got down and crossed that water i had the wind in my favor Uh it was swirling a little bit but it never so we're going down wind still in my favor every time i grunted you know it was good he's going into the wind and um so i grunt this one time the the last time yeah and uh as soon as i grunted i'm like i hope he's not right here because i just felt the wind switch and hit me in the back of the neck of course and about that point i hear something and i so i get i'm getting the gun up and i hear uh, i could hear something coming through the trees and i figured that's probably him and i got the gun up and i'm you know like please step out you know and um he grunted one time and i was you know sure it's a deer at that point and just before he or just after he grunted i see the rack come out from behind a little spruce tree but he's in a i i I didn't get a good look at his rack i was just like 
trying to find his body. You know, right. I just confirmed that he had a rack, mm. and I was trying to find body, and it was back in the thick stuff still. Yeah. And as soon, I don't know if he saw me or if he winded me at that. He probably winded me. He's yeah. only twenty five yards. I don't know, but he he had just had to take one or two more steps. And I would have, you know, drilled him mm. right there. Yeah. And his head came out in the rack, <clears throat> and he winded me, and he just whirled to go, and I just shot. Yeah. And I had no idea. I knew I had him in the middle of the scope at one point there, but I, I didn't know. Were you shooting through some thick stuff, too, down in that? Yeah, it was like yeah. thick spruce trees yeah. and other yeah. stuff, you yeah. know. And, um, but it was close enough to where you, you felt know, You got to shoot. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, I wasn't sure because <clears throat> he was kind of coming in quartering towards me. And when he went away, he kind of ran straight away. And um, I didn't know which, you know, if I shot, it happened so fast, I didn't know if I shot before he spun, <clears throat> as he was spinning, or after he spun. Yeah. And um, so I run down there, and I look, and looking and looking, and I see one little speck of blood. I'm like, you know, relief, I hit him. You yeah, know? right. And um, I kind of messed up. I followed his track going in there over to his bed, not really on purpose, but I saw that he bet, bedded right there. And he had yeah. come, I was probably within 60 or 70 yeah, probably more like 50 or 60 yards from him. Yeah. And you could see where he'd stood and paced around a little bit. And, but at that point, just before he bedded down, it was like he was feeding over here, then he was feeding over here, and he's feeding back over mm -hmm. here. He was really meandering through there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I was pretty sure I was getting real close oh, at yeah. that point. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, yeah, I, f I found the blood, kind of missed where he'd gone out of there, and I sorted that out, and he bounded just like 50 yards. And as I found the bounding tracks, I got a little spray of blood there in the middle. I'm like, oh, well, that's good. Yeah. And um, then he stops and starts walking. And all of a sudden, I can see all this blood, like, in his left track. And a little, like, dribbles in the middle, but just specks here and there. Hmm. So he walked maybe 100 yards and um, stopped. I was sneaking along best i could but it's crunchy you know i didn't oh, yeah. figure i was gonna adrenaline's going walk on up on. i was hoping yeah. to walk up on him laying there yeah. sure but it didn't you know i walked up and here's a you know a little hill he'd stopped on and and uh, he'd stood there he hadn't laid down you know it's only been 10 minutes five ten minutes maybe yeah. and but he stood there and there's a pretty good amount of blood there and then he you know i bumped him and he was running so um that's not a good feeling after you shoot. No, him. and when yeah. he was running, you know, I could still see blood in that track, but right. there's a lot less, mm -hmm. you know. And now, probably, now it's probably getting towards closer towards the end of the day, right? It was ten after three when I shot at yeah. him, and um, so he. Uh, Oof, that's getting pretty close. Yeah, yeah, and it was kind of, you know, it, maybe I, a good maybe a good fifty minutes of light left, <laughs> maybe an hour. Uh, probably an hour, an hour you know okay. you could still shoot 4 sure. 30 you know yeah probably. sure but um so i took him like another 150 yards and he's running and he's not showing any signs of slowing down he's i still got blood and uh, he comes to one point there and i checked the onyx and i look and i've gone 300 yards from where i've shot at him and i'm like you know it's supposed to be clear tonight i think i didn't apparently didn't hit him great yeah. i think i got one into him decent i haven't no idea where the track blood in the track didn't really make sense to me um a lot so i'm like i probably the smart thing to do is leave him for the night yeah so that's what i did and i so i hit the the trail and go back um get about a half mile away from there and it starts snowing like crazy oh, oh and no. i'm like it's not supposed to snow tonight you know yeah. and uh so we got like a half an inch as i'm walking back to the tent i get back to the tent by dark and i fill rick in on what happened and uh i've run in the scenario through my head you know all that night times. before we go to bed and yeah. i did sleep all right from like eight to we go to bed early at the time there's nothing, nothing else to do, to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I fell asleep good but i woke up at like midnight which is you know like the middle of the night yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and i laid awake the rest of the night just oh. trying to replay it all in my oh, head yes. you know yeah. yes the two prior bucks i wounded before that um one last year i didn't get and the one you know 
several years before that i didn't get i th- i chased it to somebody else i think yeah. that ended up getting it Counting. as far as i could tell yeah it went on to private land yeah heard a shot and assumed they got it sure yep um so i was you know like 60 70 percent confident that i was going to find them you know it didn't snow much more during the night so uh next morning we made plans I, rick was going to go with me try to get out ahead of where i left him so he he did get around in, in a pretty good spot and um, i went back to where i left him the uh night before and fouled it just maybe another 200 yards and he had run and then he'd slowed way down and walking and then he, i see a bed with blood in it and but still that dusting of snow right right beyond that there's another bed with blood in it like a lot of like smeared on the mm-hmm. snow you know not like pools of blood but just like where was it in the bed i couldn't really tell it was all tell. over like smeared around right. you know? okay and yeah. um it was i don't know one bed another bed within like 20 yards probably he had bedded you could tell he just couldn't get comfortable he was laying down he'd stand there he'd lay down he'd mm. um so and i'm look. i go to the next bed and i look and i see the next bed with blood in it and it's still yeah. got snow in it so i go to the next one and see the next one ahead and i'm i'm going as you know i'm thinking he's gonna be right oh, there. he yeah. could very well still be alive sure and um so I'm being as quiet as I can, but you got that crunch in there still. Mm-hmm. Impossible. And, uh, it, yeah, and you can't see very far. Mm-hmm. You can see 15, 20 yards where he, where all this took place. And I'm expecting all the blood to see, like, coyote tracks come in here, and mm-hmm. I find the coyotes got them and yeah. finish the job right. or something. But actually that morning in the dusting of snow, I was nervous he'd run in with other deer, might get mixed up or something, but it was two miles from the tent all the way out there. Um, and Rick went around ahead of me. Um, neither one of us caught a fresh track from the night before. Sure. Yeah. So, and the the prior night, I had seen two or three tracks as I was going back to the right. tent. Right. Right. And um, so I'm sneaking along, bed to bed, and um, I don't know, six, seven, eight beds there. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear him take off, and I got the gun up, but I can't see. You know, just too thick, and mm-hmm. I never did see him. So I go over to there, and there, you know that. You know, the last, like, two beds didn't have any of that dusting of snow in them. And um, so I get on the running track, and I go along, and then uh, I went maybe a, a 100 yards there, and he had bedded right back down. Mm-hmm. So he, he got up and took off, and I got a good look at him then um, as he took off. And then he came into a little bit of an open go, going away from me. I was ready. Sure. You and never really knew initially how big of a buck he was. No, no. I just knew, you know, he could have been a – you know 16 inch wide you know eight pointer <laughs> oh, he, sure, he sure isn't that <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> with times like this <laughs> right but uh, i just knew i'd seen rack and i thought it was a pretty good one but i didn't really yeah i was just trying to find body to shoot at yeah and uh but yeah when he started bounding out i saw like like the second bound and uh, i was on him had him in the in the scope and uh i shot but i and i hit him he didn't really show that I had hit him, so I hurry up up there, and I got just um, hair, like a graze, mm-hmm. and no blood. But I think I, I did hit him better than I thought. Um, it had, he'd been going away from me hard enough that I'd scun, like I opened up the top of his back. Like you could see the back straps, but didn't really touch the back straps. Right. And oh, I'd really? gone along the top of his neck, but it had gone in his neck. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? Um, huh. I'm pretty sure, you know, it's like – it was like bouncing along the top of him. Right, right. You know, he right couldn't tell if he it went in or if it had just right. took a, another chunk of meat out and kept going. But I'm yeah. pretty sure it did end up in his neck there. Because mm-hmm. uh, after that, um, he only went another 50 yards. And I'm just sneaking along on the track. And it's starting to open up. And there's a hill there. And I can see good over the hill, like 60, 70, 80 yards out in front sure. of me. So I'm looking way out for him. And I'm just one step at a time, you know, quiet as I can. You know, I got the gun half up, and I'm sneaking along, and uh, I don't know, here to the doorway, maybe oh my ten gosh. yards. <laughs> He's laying behind a little spruce tree, you know, with his yeah. head up. You yeah. know, he's still alive. Right. And I, I'm like, oh, he's right, right there, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I just, yeah. you know, 
got the gun to my shoulder. I didn't dare take a step to the side or something. Mm-hmm. I just put yeah. it on Brown through that tree, and I shot, and it was just a little Christmas tree, not even a half a Christmas tree, and uh, just enough to hide him. Yeah. And uh, I shoot, and he flopped over there, uh, and I and... got up to him. And, I'm, and I didn't realize, he, you know, I'm like, I'm Whoa. on the radio to Rick. He had actually Rick had actually heard him. He was close enough that when I jumped him the first time, he heard him crunch out. He's like, I'm pretty sure I sure. heard him. And when I shot, he was pretty close again. But what he'd yeah. done, he's kind of gone in and paralleled this one other trail. And Rick had gone kind of around and was parallel on, on the other side. Yeah. Um, after I jumped him the first time, yeah. I'm like trying to send him down. But, you know, yeah. where do you tell him to go? You know, everything oh, looks the same, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um but he could kind of tell from where I shot. He was getting ahead of me, and but um, so I called Rick on the radio, and I, you know, yeah, it's a good one. I had, I had told him that after I shot the, the second <laughs> yeah oh, time I at him. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, walking it's up a good on one, that. you know. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, he as I think I had told him to start coming towards me, and as uh, you know, I'm like it's not the buck, not the. You know, one with the stickers, we thought yeah. it's a, just a great big heavy eight-pointer. Yeah. And um, I still didn't really recognize him from the trail camera pictures for like five, ten minutes or something. I'm looking yep. at him, and because um, he was actually still kicking a little bit, I shot him. ended up, I thought I was shooting him in the shoulder through that tree, but I shot him in the neck again, and he still oh, really? was kicking around a little bit. Um, so tough. So I got my hands on him and and uh, looking at him the way his – tines were shaped and kind of right. go forward there yeah i'm like i'm like rick this is that one that was that we've had like a few years in a row you know really? that real tall eight you know and um so he gets over to me and we do the little pictures and oh yeah video oh yeah and yeah he, you have to yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome what, what do you guess story? him at for age um so i think six and a half or seven and a half mm. um because I had pictures of him at least, I had him in, I had him this year, 22 and 21 for sure. He was a seven pointer in 21. Yeah. Um, he didn't have the, this side, like how it's kind of a crab claw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of, it didn't crab claw, it just came up, but it was, it was heavy and, you know. Did like you always have there. that mass? Um, it's hard to tell. He's a yeah. big deer. Lots of times it's deceiving with a big deer. Their yep. horns don't yes. look sure as did you, good. did you score him? I did. Um, I scored him in the tent. Um, came up with 138 basically in the tent, just kind of doing it quick when it's yeah. still on the, his mass oh. is just so impressive. Yeah. yeah. And how much did he weigh? 177 yeah. at the mm. tent. Yeah, we have we have to ask the yeah. question. We ask everybody yeah. we have on, yeah. what's what's the average weight, do you think, of the bucks that you're shooting in the Adirondacks? Pretty much the big ones like that are 170 to 185. We've right. got a pile of them in that. Right. Have range. you shot a 200-pounder in the Adirondacks nope. or no? I keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> so doesn't I, everybody, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I see a track here and there. We've gotten through the years. It's been like 25 years we've been going up there, and we've gotten – five or six rick got one um last 205 um that was probably five or five or six years ago maybe sure yeah um do you you feel like hunting out of that tent camp and having spent so much time in that area has contributed to your success over the years as opposed to constantly doing something different because we we found that we still haven't necessarily found a home base in an area that we really like to spend the bulk of our time although maybe this year we kind of established that and we wonder if we really spent time year in and year out in a particular area, if that would help us get on better quality bucks because you start to get a better idea who's in there. Yeah, it definitely helps. You know, I know where how they move through there, one group of deer right. to the next. You know, there's just pockets of deer. You might go two miles and not see a deer mm-hmm. track. Right. You know, but I kind of know. But I it seems know. like you have some phenomenal gene pool out there because I mean you're yeah, you're shooting deer that are are a lot bigger than most guys are shooting right. the Adirondacks. Well, we're just in far enough that um, yeah, I you know, talk. nobody else goes there. I right. mean, a couple other guys, you know. But I mean, our tent camp this year was two point seven, and and that we was a that was a long. We must escape most everybody, but that that was a pretty good walk. I mean, six miles is nothing to you, but for the average person, six that's a twelve mile round trip. 
Yeah. Just getting in right. and out of camp alone, let alone whatever you hunt. So I figure once we get four miles in, we're past any day hunters. You oh, know, you're well absolutely. past any. I mean, from our experience, you're well past 99% of hunters. Yeah. So I, I, I've told this on a recent podcast where our tent was, like you said, it was like oh, just under three miles. Yeah. And um, I walked in there a couple days on the snow and there was no tracks past a mile on, on an easy walking trail right. too. I mean, all of them cut right up the mountain or right off. So, I mean, you had three miles back in there, like you're beating let 99%. Alone six. Of, yeah. Right. Let alone six. And you guys are, you guys, have you ever taken like horses in or anything? Or are you straight walking? Yeah. So when we first started going in, um, Brian started smirking. He knows yeah. the answer to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I want to hear this. This is cool. <laughs> the first year they pushed a deer card in. It was just Rodney and Kirk and my father went in to kind of scout it out and uh, stay like, I don't know if they stayed four days or something. They ended up camping um, five miles in, and uh, they hadn't brought enough water or drinks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rodney ended up shooting a nice, real nice buck. Actually, that one weighed 198 like four days later because they brought it out whole. But they packed all their stuff on one big deer cart. And um, so... I guess the water, they had like one soda to split between them for the <laughs> five mile haul out with the deer. Yeah. You know, oh, that was dehydrated. Oh. Yeah. So, um, so they determined that it was a good spot to go. Yeah. And, um, I made the comment to Rodney, he kind of gave me a hard time for quite a few years about it. I'm like, Oh, if Rodney can get one in there, anybody can get one in there. <laughs> so, uh, like, seven or eight years later and i still hadn't killed a buck in tent camp <laughs> he kept reminding your me words on that one. <laughs> and he's yeah. shooting one like every other year yeah. yeah so the following year we um we were gung-ho you know we were gonna go and stay a week and alan had um mules that he would log with oh, that's awesome. um so he, he's like uh we'll get a snowmobile trailer hook it to the four cart you know put all our stuff on that and we'll go in for a week he had just bought a big montana canvas tent yeah and uh, are these some pictures we're getting in here yep oh good yeah, we'll, have to, we'll have to get ones. those in uh yeah we'll take some pictures yeah, yeah, yeah. Of with permission but, of course yes <laughs> yeah i think 99 was the first year i went in they 98 was the year that rodney had got his uh it's starting to sound like we might need to get a hold of this rodney guy too <laughs> yeah yeah he's a character yeah oh but, wow uh, that made okay. it easier huh yeah, but then we still end up making like two trips because now we got seven guys, a tent and a cook shack, a wood stove. Yeah. Then you got to bring hay and grain for the mule. Right. True. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So I think the first year, so there's probably a picture in there of the rollover. Mm. We had tried to make it all in one trip, and the snowmobile trailer hit the, you know, an old beaver dam. Oh, one wheel went up, and we had it so top heavy. We Look at all the hay first, I, I think. At the end. Yeah. But I can enjoy it and really pay attention <laughs> yeah, to yeah. it. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but just looking at some of the pictures you've taken over the years, and we have talked in the past how you shot a lot of your bucks in the swamps, but yeah. is, it, is it a bit flatter compared to maybe like the eastern Adirondacks? Because where we hunt, we can't get out of the mountains. It's like every deer right. you, you're going to hunt or buck you're going to track, is, he's headed to the top of the mountain. Yeah. It seems maybe a little bit flatter where you are. Yeah, it's pretty flat. Like the trail, it, it's six miles in, but it's we keep it pretty well cleared out mm -hmm. yeah you know it's an old road grade is really what it is I sure. mean, we took that cart snowmobile trailer you couldn't now it's grown in is um, this lease ground within the park or this is state land oh uh, it's um state land okay yep yeah but it wasn't always you know like yeah. most of the state land oh, or, oh you of know, course of and course a lot of those conservation easements are yeah they're still yeah which we had no idea about yeah we hear we a lot about, about conservation easements yeah. out in the western adirondacks but yeah. I, i'm not familiar with them back towards where we are yeah, the landowner gets a tax break to uh, put them in a conservation easement, and they can still log them, mm. log the property and all that, but some of them you're allowed to hike and that kind of thing. Others you can hunt and fish. So I believe it's kind of similar to what they do in the Midwest, right, with farmers who have land, Probably. and they turn it into public, basically, and they get tax breaks like on Like hunter it. access type yeah, stuff almost. Yeah. But. And there's some of them that are conservation easements, but there's still like hunting leases, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. all, every one, I huh. guess, is got different rules. Yeah. So you got to kind of figure That's it interesting. out. Yeah. I've hunted some of that ground sure, um, and had sure. some luck, but. Um, so, so every year you guys are hunting out of your tent camp solely, basically? No. No. No, we bounce around like. Uh, oh, you do? A little. Okay. I'll follow snow too. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
the one year we got too much snow in the tent 2018 maybe yeah um we were in there we'd only been in there three or four days and we had snow Mm. and um we were supposed to get like another foot or two and we did you know and i i hated to pull out right and um but we figured sure too much you know too much yeah to get out six miles with all your stuff and two Mm. feet i can't i can't imagine i mean the farthest we've gone and and granted it's a very steep terrain but the farthest we've gone in is like just about three miles right yeah that that's what's hard for us is it's so steep where we've hunted that we don't dare really want to go past three miles because by the way the crow flies at the end of the day at the ups and right. downs it feels like it's closer to six and it's pretty exhausting and and like yeah. we said usually i mean now now that what have we done two or three years we've done tech camp mm-hmm. i think uh, two years two now. years yeah. um every time we've done it you know the the distance we have gone had like i said we've beat out every other we've never ran into anybody yeah i've never ran into anybody back it's been helpful camp. so i mean would would you say that you find that there are plenty of big bucks that stay deep in? They don't all come out towards the roads and such? Yeah, it's hard to tell. They make, I figure they make at least a 10-mile loop, 15-mile sure. loop. So they might know, spend some time. You yeah. know, so they're probably a five-mile radius. Mm-hmm. Do you, know, do you believe, though, bucks. like, you know, you, you always hear you always hear people say, like, oh, the farther you go back in, the bigger they are. Like, do you think that's the case? I mean, I, I would uh, say by well, the bucks you've shot, maybe. When I was dragging this one out um, – as we go in there, there's private land on one side and water on the other. And, um, so you can't really hunt most of that. And, um, when we were going out together before the snow came, we saw this great big track. And I'm like by one of the beaver dams and there's a deer, smaller deer track next to it. I'm like, is this a moose calf or is this a big buck? Right, track? Right, right. Right. And then when I was dragging him out in the sled that day, right fresh in the in the trail there's a great big oh, no toe way. dragger you know oh. 200 pound track sure and uh oh. you know going right towards the private land i'm like you know i'm tagged out anyways but, <laughs> right yeah, right yeah. but no, next I, year <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that's yeah. awesome but yeah there there's big bucks but there's small bucks in there too you know i saw a pile right. of bucks this year in there i've mm-hmm. like my best year um was probably the previous year i saw three rack bucks in three days and i thought i was doing that's good. crazy and this year i grunted in like a whole bunch the one brian shot and a bunch of others the two i yeah. talked about you know now was there point. any consistency to as of like what like certain areas where you were grunting these bucks in or was it just kind of felt right it grunted and just they felt in? right like there wasn't beech nuts that i could find this year so all the deer were kind of concentrated in the seemed like in the swamps or near water right you know mm-hmm. and um lots of days i had just a dusting of snow right and um so you see a, a walking along you know half mile you don't see a deer track come to a deer track must be deer here yeah oh, grunt, right you know right keep yeah. seeing deer tracks keep grunting keep you know? it simple right <laughs> and um yeah it's it was you want to tell your story we grunted sure. yeah let's hear that it. one in yeah. <laughs> let's hear it so i think Going into this year, I haven't seen a buck in there yep. at all. I think I've seen maybe a handful of does. Mm-hmm. So, like, the first weekend I went in, I was going in Friday, and then I would get a full day to hunt Saturday, and then I'd walk back out Sunday so I could go to school on Monday. Yeah. So I did that, like, three weekends in a row. Oh. So, like, the first weekend, we had we were coming out to the Beaver Dam, or a big beaver pond and there's a beaver dam that goes like kind of diagonal so like the end that we were on is closer than the farther end and a buck comes tearing across that dad got like three shots off hit it in the tail my gun (laughs) wouldn't go off (laughs) so and i figured you know that's the last opportunity i'm gonna get in there for the season yeah because it was a good buck i, I mean. thought it might have been my only because that was the first one i had seen yeah. too yeah. You, nev- you never know it <laughs> right could, it could have been that's you know years past you see a buck you know that might be your chance for two we, years no, we, we, we say it all the time you might like, see one deer all season yeah or not, none you know not to interrupt your story but like we say it all the time like you see that buck that might just be the only buck you're gonna see all season and you yeah. better you better capitalize be on too it picky. yeah yeah so yeah, and then the next weekend, I saw Saturday, I saw three bucks in one day. And the first one I saw, I was sitting in the tree stand. Well, it's 
It's sort of a tree stand. It's a big white pine tree with branches to the ground. and <laughs> Yeah. Works perfect for it. I yeah. took a little two-by-eight <laughs> in there, and we balanced it on, and I kind of screwed <laughs> it in. Yeah. But it's a good spot. Yeah. And I think I might have seen the deer dad shot in there, actually. No kidding. Oh, really? Yeah. Because while I was – I had seen a moose in there the weekend before, and I could hear one feeding off to my right, so I was trying to get a look at him. And then I heard something come behind me to the left. So I look around and I see it's a nice buck. Like, I didn't look too hard at him. And I start, you know, shaking, getting all excited. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but it was too thick and I couldn't really turn all the way around to get a shot off at him back there. And there was a nice opening that he was headed for. So I was waiting for him to go there. But then he got to where we had walked in, smelled our track, and took off. Yeah. So, and then like we saw two other bucks that day. All right, we grunted in. You you worked your way over to me, in the stand. You mm. kind of did a little push, kind of. Yeah, I was trying um, to find that you, buck. But. So the bucks yeah. were in there where you guys were this yeah, year. Yeah, that's that crazy. Was kind the of amount a of bu- spot. The amount of bucks that you guys are talking about right now, like you don't get that too often right. in the Adirondacks. Yeah, but that's, it's three three and a half miles from right, the tent. Right, right. So I went in there the same area I went in muzzleloader this year yeah and um i spent four days in there three days i did all day sits get up you know leave the tent at right i don't know five in the morning i think five thirty or something yeah. yeah i'd get out there ease my way in just as it's getting daylight you know it's yeah hour it took me over an hour and a half to get back there wow so that's why we were only going there saturdays hiking six miles on friday you know you don't want to hike another you know, right. you're going to be it's going to be dark by the time right. you get there anyways, right. Right. or you're not oh, going to have man. much time or the energy to go out and back you know that'd yeah. be a, a lot you know that'd be a 14 mile day <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yeah it's so, a long day so, so yeah that's why we were going saturdays because that was the full day he had to hunt yeah mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then we'd hunt closer to the tent you know friday night sunday morning mm-hmm. but yeah so we got together you and grunted in a six pointer to us, you know, you 15, 20 yards, could have shot him. Yeah. Yeah. But and then we saw another, got a glimpse of another buck later in the day. So I was real happy with seeing, you know, that amount of bucks sure. in there for not seeing anything. Right. And then did the same thing the next weekend, which was like the weekend after Thanksgiving. So we went out, sat in the stand till i don't know 10 probably because it was pretty cold it's pretty cold that morning too yeah it was probably 7 30 to 9 30 10 o'clock or something yeah so we kind of and it, the ground was too crunchy the leaves and everything were making too much noise to like go directly on the trails right so dad figured our best chance was just to sneak around in the swamps and grunt if we found a good spot so that's what we were doing, and we were actually really close to where you shot your 11-pointer yep. two years ago. So Dad was saying, you know, this is a good spot, and mm-hmm. then we stop and grunt, and we saw a flash of something that was walking towards us. We both thought, you know, it might be a moose because it was pretty All dark. All kinds of moose sign in there. Every time I yep. went to that tree stand, we were both here and moose. You know, yeah. they were living Just right thick in there. There, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. So we both saw him and then he kind of just got a glimpse of a beam so we knew he was you know he had some sort of rack yeah and then he just stepped out like there was a tree falling down and there was kind of like a gap between the branches and i just had just enough gap where i could see his front shoulder so i just shot then he went maybe 50 yards yeah we were pretty sure we heard him crash but yeah, yeah. I, he had a lot better look at him than I did. I just saw, you know, a beam, and I couldn't really see much of the body. I saw a beam, and he was kind of closer anyways. I yeah. just shoot him, you know. We always, say, we, always, <laughs> we always say when you see some of the beam, more than enough. More than yeah, enough. More if than he's enough. got more than enough, the split second you see him, just start shooting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you got him, huh, right yeah. there? Yeah. That was it. Yeah. It was. An- and how far, how far from uh, camp was that? Um, 
three and a half miles. Yeah. That's the sweet spot. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now is it, was that uh, headed away from camp or headed back towards a truck? or what? Away from camp. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, Oof. you know. I think it's nine miles. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys? I don't know if you mentioned this or not. Are you packing deer out, or are you? Well, they're we probably deer carting them. Oh, you're deer, deer yeah. carting. Yeah. yeah. We and take everything in on deer carts, and then it lucked out. There's another guy uh, years ago left a deer cart in there that we'd stumbled upon. Oh. Um, oh. Okay. So we were able. I didn't know about it when I got that eleven pointer in the same general yeah. area. So I dragged that one all the way back to the. Yeah. Tent, sure. you know, all from noon to mm. basically six at night, five thirty or something. Hey, right. please take a break here, quick. I yeah. just got to run to the bathroom. Are you guys yep. gonna keep? Do you want to keep going or do you want to take a break? I just got to go pee. No, quick. I'll let them keep going so we don't lose okay. train of right. thought. Yeah, I'll be right back then. Yeah. Um, well, so. with the, so um, so with that being said, obviously we kind of keep coming back to the swamps, and I want to talk about that with you, anyways. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you're hunting the swamps, like what what comes to mind? What what about a swamp? Do you like? What do you what have you seen as a good trend over the years that's paid off for you or I don't know. It seems like they like the thicker cover mm -hmm. of them. That's where the does tend to be. I was going to say, do you find the does in there? Yeah. Yeah. Like the mountains we've got, they're not super steep. You know, like it was, like you're asking, it's, it's not that hard to get in there. It's just a long ways. Sure. You know, it's, sure. I mean, if you're used to walking five or six miles, it's right. not like walking in the mall or down the road or whatever, but right. it's not bad. And the deer carts push easy. We got nice and light carts and other than the first push in with all your mm -hmm. stuff and the right. last push out, or if you got a deer, that gets, but we, you know, three hours to get in there. Um, but yeah, the, the mountains that are in there, they've got a little spruce on top, you know, and once, mm -hmm. you know, you'll catch, there'll be two or three, four deer up on one of them, maybe, but that's about it. Seems like there's more of them down in the, you know, around the water. I yeah. think they're staying there. Um, it's a little thicker. Lots of times, uh, close to the water, I think, because of the coyotes, mm -hmm. you know, they'll go out in the water to lose the coyotes. You know, sure. About the easiest thing for them to. Yeah, and it, and it sounds like uh, you guys have quite a bit of beaver territory in there between yeah. the beaver meadows. and or is, is it a lot of dried dried up meadows, or they're usually no, pretty wet? they're still yeah. thick in there. They yeah. have, they've given up a couple of them. They've, there's like uh, four probably across the trail on the way in that keep giving us problems so you got to wear like your muck boots or whatever right in a little ways and then switch boots leave your oh gosh, rubber boots yeah. there the other ones you can sure go through all right but they did move out of one the um, big one yeah yeah the yeah. biggest one because we had made a little trail around it like they dammed it up kitty corner across the old road grade, right and to go around it there's all these boulders in there and we made the best little trail that we could but it was still kind of too person operation to get the deer cart through there sure easily you know yeah. you could do it by yourself but it was a lot easier with a couple people yeah so yeah every little trickle in there you know if it's a foot wide thing you know right by our tent um two years ago mm -hmm. they uh started damming that up and um we had waterfront property you know oh got beautiful this big <laughs> it's kind of nice. pond here but if it goes like a foot higher they're going to be flooding into where we set our tent up <laughs> yeah so uh, we I bought my trapping license, and Kevin and I uh, <coughs> trapped them out, not uh, 2022. We thought there was probably more in there, but uh, only caught the two of them. And, uh, Beautiful. Nothing. Two beavers doing there. all that work, huh? Yeah. Ain't that yeah. something? They got a lot of trees to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the good part about that is they dropped all these uh, birch trees, <laughs> yeah. like hung them up and stuff, yeah. or cut like almost all the way through, and we got a couple of them. Uh, a lot of them they couldn't drag down, it, so we're going to use that for firewood. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. What do you <laughs> now? What do you, I, I wanted to talk? I don't know what. Sorry, I'm coming in the conversation. It's okay. I just one, we we just briefly discussed. Swamps. Yeah, just just talking just, about swamps. What do you like uh, about? What them? do you guys? What are you running for a tent? What do you got for a stove in there? Like what? What's your setup like? We got like a, actually the stove rusted out this past year. Um, little holes in it. We didn't notice till we got it set. Yeah. Up. But it's just a homemade, it's, um, I think it's like 20 inches deep, um, but pretty airtight. Um, yeah. So we hauled that out this year and um, bought a new one. I forget the name of the 
place online. The guy in Minnesota makes some A metal works or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I got the little dog or something. There's a it's big not dog your average portable dog. one though. It's probably a heavier duty one. Or is um, it, is it's it like 35 portable? pounds. I, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, it's a pretty yeah. good one. A lot different. So like the, we we've been running this tiny little one that we bought on Amazon. It and, oh, it's so terrible. It so, won't. Yeah. I mean, we have. I'll a, have to show. I got it out in the garage. Oh, good. We yeah. haven't. I haven't even burned the stuff off it yet. But okay. It was, oh, okay. Um, it was ninety bucks to ship it. Okay. But it was four hundred and thirty bucks. It's got oh, okay. side tables for it. That oh, yeah. Removable. Yeah. Uh, the legs take off and everything stores inside it and that's it's 24 inches deep i think and it's like uh 12 by 15 or something and it's got you can damper it down my buddy john pill there um, yeah yep. got one and used it this year and, pretty good uh, after seeing ours so he bought yep. this and used it in his little tp thing yeah and i thought we might need the bigger one but i, I messaged the guy um and i'm like yeah we got a 10 by 14 tent i don't know if we should go with the bigger one one or the you know little dog one and he's right. like i got a tent my 14 tent and i use the little dog as perfect you know? yeah so yeah like, yeah so, now so is, are you guys using like uh just tarps and stuff or no or we you got have an actual tent it's uh i think we got this oh, yeah, no one. i've seen a picture of it you have an actual tent yeah, it's yeah. A canvas okay tent. yeah yeah it's uh no it's uh cabela's oh or whatever. my wife and i have the cabela's credit cards so yeah we'll save up our points oh yeah so it's uh it's not the alacnac one that they yeah. have but it's real similar it's right. um I forget the name of it, but yeah, it's 10 I by 14. He's got these uh, pods, they call them, that um, zip on zip the sides. Yes, so, yes. Um, we use a couple of those. Um, it makes the whole tent colder, though, and they aren't that great. Like the, yeah. So we, But we run a big tarp over top of it, 20 by 30 tarp. So okay. we got kind of like a, a dry place for the wood and stuff. Sure. Yeah. 10 by 14 isn't that... Bay, right, you, know, you can right. use up space but, pretty quickly. Yeah, I got some pictures in there. How much does that weigh? Okay. How much does that to carry? I think the tent itself, without the poles, is like fifty pounds, maybe. Okay, so it's like yeah. half of what half of ours. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure their deer carts are extremely helpful <laughs> yeah. because we're packing everything in, and that's just right. a nightmare. Well, you can't get that much stuff. <laughs> in another like thing, and, and Todd Mead had brought this up to us. He, do you guys use single wheel deer carts, or are you using the uh, no wheel? dual wheel? Okay, we've got aluminum ones. Um, yeah, the steel uh, ones. You want aluminum because they're thirty pounds. Now, did you get same. those custom made? Or you buy them somewhere? Um, Kevin and his brother um, had two of them custom made. Mine's a API. That makes tree stands yeah. okay yeah um they used to make these game carts and i bought one new put bigger wheels on it. you want pneumatic wheels too the wheels that came on it were like solid wheel or solid right. rubber okay the snow builds up on those yeah and the cabela's carts the solid wheels too like it's like you're making a snowman the, right uh, rick had a dual wheel ones and um <clears throat> it was awful okay you know even an inch of snow and it's you know you got a 20 inch wheel and now it's 26 mm -hmm. inches and i can picture exactly mm, what you're talking about you know yep. you stop and kick it off and you roll it and does they're it all noisy again. too another 10 feet they and click and clack because those rubber or those solid wheels yeah the pneumatic ones are nice so like mm -hmm. uh like a bike tire like sure. a regular mm -hmm. bicycle like a huffy bike you know kid's yeah. bike or something okay. um so we put those on them um so yeah I, so i picked up another one um off a of craigslist or something and I got one. I ended up getting one for my father, too. So we've got three of them between us. And there, there's so much stuff that goes into tent camp that, like, you just want to – like, I remember when we started, we were like, yeah, we're just going to drag this tent up here and yeah. run out of it. Like, that's what it's going to be. And, like, people don't realize how much work it is to, A, get it in, bring it in as light as possible, do all the wood while you're up yeah. there, get something to eat at night. Like we say it all the time, it's so much work that, that yeah. people wouldn't even realize. And then – Add hiking in six miles, twelve mile round trip. That's that's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. But it we seems to be worth it and pays off for you guys. Yeah. So we don't do really short trips. Like Brian's going in and hunting basically two days. You know, a half day, a full day. Yeah, oh, I give day. him a lot of credit for that. Yeah, but I yeah. I don't like to go in for less than like four or five. Mm -hmm. Right. I did um, ten day. Well, I did the two. I we went in Friday, Veterans Day, and I stayed the whole week. And then you came in Friday. I was thinking about going out maybe later in the week. And then he yep. was able to come in the following Friday. So I was yeah. in there for 10 days, mm -hmm. 11 days, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Went out with him the Sunday before Thanksgiving. 
and then back home for a few days, work for a few days, and yep. Thanksgiving, then back in the next Friday. Right. Uh, yeah, dedicate a lot of time yeah. to it. But so, yeah, it's um, it's a lot of work. We don't take the – you can't get the mules in there anymore. Alan doesn't have the mules anymore. We took one mule the first year. Then we took a team. Then um, – Tell them your runaway story. Yeah, there's been a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so – I don't know what year it was, but we were taking two mules in and um, got in there the first day, got the tent set up, and um, had enough time to uh, go hunt, you know. I think Alan was, you know, everybody went and hunted because uh, Alan's like, uh, Daisy was the one, like, older mule, and he had this younger mule he called Little Dick. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I'm assuming he's the one who ran away. <laughs> Well, they both ran away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> little Dick would chase the coyotes out of the town. That was Little Prick that ran away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he tied Daisy up with, like, a long, you know, enough rope where she could get, get her out and feed a little bit and yeah. left hay out there. You only have to tie one up and the other one will hang around. So, um, well, Alan thinks that somebody showed up and let the mules loose, you know, oh, let Daisy no. loose. Yeah. And um, I think he just didn't tie a very good knot. He wasn't a Boy <laughs> Scout, you know. But <laughs> so this was one time where, you know, it worked to my advantage, like getting back to the town like an hour after dark because those guys got back about dark and the mules are gone. So um, Rodney's like, well, you know, I don't want you to go out by yourself. You could see on the you know, tracks and it was cold night, but you could see tracks maybe a dusting of snow or something they could see that they had headed back out for the horse trailer you know really so, they went they went right back out the way you guys came in yeah yeah just just instinctual of them to do that or i don't know you know huh. who knows what they're thinking, just, you know? they probably just stayed on the trail and never left <laughs> yeah them. yeah huh. that's what they did yeah so rodney's like well, i'll go back with them you know they had rode in on the on the four cart you know so there's yeah. a little cart you know, with just two seats and a little, uh, place to hang the reins, and yeah. then there's a hitch, and then we had a snowmobile trailer. Yeah, we saw a picture of it in the in that book, yeah. and, and we'll have to share it on here if, if you want us to. I yeah, love sure. It. I'd love to put it up in the video. Put it at the end. Yeah, 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 it's pretty cool. So uh, so they take off, following the tracks, hoping they're going to catch them along the trail. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Well, we'll find them back at the horse trailer. So they get out the six miles Oh my God. to the horse trailer. No mules in sight. Oh, <laughs> no. So, <laughs> <laughs> they get down to the dirt road and looking for tracks, tracking mules. <laughs> so they went down the dirt road. No, oh, I don't know. Three miles. Oh. There's some camps over there. They <clears throat> see they taking a right and over by these camps. <laughs> but by they were now surprised. it's like uh I don't know, <laughs> eight, nine o'clock at night probably. And uh so they're ch chasing these mules around the they finally see them or hear them or whatever and they're sneaking around by these camps you know they're <laughs> you know small camps uh with state land all around them and stuff yeah. the mules are in amongst these few camps and there's lights on and some of them some of them there aren't so they're sneaking around and finally get the mules caught now they got to go back down the road you know and back in so oh they did goodness. uh what they do probably a 14 mile Oh, so I guess day. I guess the moral <laughs> of the story is if you want to be a good buck tracker, just cut a couple mules loose. And <laughs> yeah, give practice them, on that. Give them a couple yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alan made sure he tied a good knot. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet he never. Time. I bet. I bet nobody cut them loose ever again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, but by the time they got back to the tent, they were uh, Rodney had fallen asleep. They're leading these mules. They didn't dare ride because they got no saddle they, you could ride the mules but they had <laughs> no saddle and it turn it was like zero or 10 degrees or oh. something i remember rodney had a mountain dew in his chest inside pocket yeah and the thing had froze solid as they're walking back in <laughs> holy cow and at one point right uh, alan's in lead and he yells back to rodney who's leading the other mule and he didn't like answer him and rodney thought that he had fallen asleep while he's walking back in, <laughs> you know, because they, they had gone and hunted, too, you know, yeah. from oh, three yeah. to dark. Oh. Exhausted. Then they did 14 miles after dark or whatever it yeah. was. Oh, I yeah. bet they slept pretty good that night. I bet yeah. they did. Did they go out the next morning, too? Yeah, they hunted the next day. Oh, okay. But I remember <laughs> Alan sitting there, and his legs were just, like, twitching like they couldn't, you know. You're just, right. Just oh, exhausted. Wouldn't settle down, mm. you know. 
but so yeah. I we have to we have to ask about the buck straight the behind bu- you. We we, we got to yeah. hear the story on it. Brad and I were on the way down here. We were scrolling through some of your pictures and and we just saw that thing. We're like we we got to hear the yeah. story. Yeah. On, yeah. On he's that an exceptional right buck. He doesn't look like he's a big woods deer. His just the way he his, looks his like he, he belongs looks, in Iowa. Yeah, maybe. he looks yeah. like he shot him in Iowa, Illinois. You know, name that Midwestern state, but he's special for the big woods. Yeah, he scores. Uh, he green scored uh, gross one fifty nine. <laughs> Um, and, his, and his head is, I've said it a hundred times, but his head is giant. If you could see yeah. him in person, he's got a monster melon on him. Yeah. And before we start, I'm just thinking, we're going we're gonna to have to come sit and do a whole other podcast with you at some point because I have a million things I want to ask <laughs> him and a million of the deer I, I want to ask yeah. questions about. But I, wanna, I definitely want to hear this one before before we wrap it up. Yeah, that one's a shorter story. I can make it a little longer. I don't know how oh, whatever. far we're here. <laughs> and tell us as long as you want to. That one uh, was 2009. Um, the previous year, I had uh, picked up a track on this one crossing, like pinch point, in the snow. Um, Alan had shot a buck there a few years before, chasing a doe or something, or nearby there, and he'd shot another deer in that same vicinity, uh, but he didn't go in for quite a few years. And um, so I went and I checked that. We got in there the first day. We'd had snow and we'd missed it. Like we we used to just go in for like one week, like second week in November, mm-hmm. go in, take everything in, set up, hunt seven days, pack up, take everything out. Wow, it's so much work. Wow. Yeah. It's and um, children were little too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different times. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brian was. I got a great picture of Brian holding that rack when he was like three years old oh, oh really yeah. that's awesome i'll have awesome. to show you guys yeah that. yeah you'll look but, back on that forever you'll yeah. always look back on that but so we got in there i had just enough time to make a loop down um to this like pinch point and see you know cause there's a sandy area there where you could always see tracks going through and i did put a camera there the year after i killed him i think um but i got over there and we'd had snow before hand and it was like the day we pushed in it was like 50 degrees like a warm front was coming in mm-hmm. and um i got over there and there was just like a little bit of snow and i could see this big deer track in the snow like in one place but it looked like it had been from that day and when i was coming up to that spot i kind of i wasn't sure i jumped a deer but i thought i'd heard something go you know right and um so but the track was pretty impressive and the, the where I tracked him through the year before he had broken the ice. I don't know if it was him or not, you know, but it was a big deer track and I ended up getting close to him, but not seeing him. Mm-hmm. And, um, but he had walked through in the, I could tell it was in the daytime cause I'd picked his track up. You know, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning when I got there and it had been a cold night the night before, but he had to walk through the water and he broke the ice and it hadn't refroze and it was still a cold day. So I knew he'd crossed there in the daytime or at least deer were mm-hmm. crossing there in the daytime. Right. Um, so I made a little ground blind there and I figured it was going to be a warm week. You know, we kind of hit it wrong and I'm like, my best chance is to sit, you know, I'm not going to, it's supposed to be like 60 degrees tomorrow mm-hmm. and, um, I'm just going to make a spot, a little ground blind here to sit and watch this little, you know, I got this 15 yard swath to, you know, there's a beaver pond up above me and there's mm-hmm. a pond down below me, but there's like a chain of beaver ponds and that pond below me is like a half mile so you know if they're going from this side to that side they're then don't want to get their feet wet they're Mm going to come through there and you found that the beaver ponds tend to choke deer pretty good if they can yeah they'll follow along the edge of them sure and they'll cross on those dams a Mm, lot yeah Mm. you know i'm sure they'll if they're they'll swim them too if you're pushing them hard but i I think in general they don't like to swim if they don't have to yeah Yeah. so i kind of decided that was my best chance for that year is to hang out um in that little ground that makes wine. sense yeah and um i had a chair i took over in there and um just kind of brushed it in and uh let's see yeah i went back so the next morning i i uh i made my little ground blind i didn't sit there i went and poked around some other you know scouted some other spots so i'm like i'm gonna go back there you know try to get back there at three o'clock and it it was like t-shirt weather it did it was like 60 degrees that day Mm -hmm. and deer aren't moving you know nobody's Mm -hmm. shooting anything you know seeing anything sure i got buddies that are out west you know and same thing out there you know Mm -hmm. this warm front had come through so i'm like 
I'll sit there, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to take me all week. You know, I was going to sit there morning and night all week and just hunt, you know, around during the day because uh, I couldn't sit all day all at day, that point. No, I right. Get it, I get it. And, um, but, yeah, first night, um, got back there at 3 o'clock or whatever, and I don't know, it was maybe 15 minutes before dark, and um, a few birds come out. You know, lots of times I see, if I start – it's pretty desolate up there, and if you start seeing birds, lots of times you, I don't know if the birds are following the deer around, the right. deer are following the birds around. The was it blue jays? Feeding on the same thing. No, it wasn't yeah. blue jays. It was. Uh, I've heard though. Uh, my yeah. one buddy says, "You hear a blue jay, you get ready." Yeah, <laughs> I've always said that too. Yeah, I've always yeah. been a believer in that. Yeah, and but I, it is interesting how the ecosystems kind of work like that. Yeah, and when you're sitting there, you got nothing. Life else is to life notice. out in the big woods. So, well, yeah. I mean, you hear you hear on. Ronnie Elmer talk about it all the time. He's like, "Listen, listen to your surroundings around you." He said, "Like a lot of th- that buck that he shot a couple years ago that he you know he videoed. Mm-hmm. He, he was like, I stopped because the birds were talking to me." He said, "He sure. said they were yeah. they were going just nuts felt all like around me." A sixth sense type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do get that. You do. It, after a few days in the, you know, mm-hmm. you start to feel like you're more Almost observant. Be, you're more aware yeah. of yes. everything. Be, yes. yes. Yeah. You're, you're getting, exactly you're just so. sinking into your surroundings, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. So actually, this is a little longer story anyways. Cause, so I, I, um, the birds come out and I'm, then I could hear something off to my left. And the way my chair's like facing like this, he's got to come here for me to have, and I got wide open, clear shooting. And, um, but the trail kind of comes down, um, on an angle. And, uh, so I'm looking back at the trail and I'm thinking I heard something, you know, I don't know if it's birds or whatever. And all of a sudden I see something yellow and I could tell it's in the trail. And, um, the first, my first reaction was there was somebody wearing a yellow vest walking down the trail. And, uh, but I'm like, that doesn't really make sense. And it kind of stopped there. And I'm looking, and it's real thick through there. And you know, so I'm looking through 25 yards of, uh, you know, just whips. Mm. And I can see this yellow thing there. And I get the gun. I, I pretty much decided it was horns, you know, but I wasn't positive. So I yeah. get the gun up, and sure enough, it's it's horns. And, um, I couldn't really tell how big. I'd shot this buck, the 10-pointer, the previous buck. year, and um, <clears throat> tracked him. And I figured it was about the same as that. I could tell it was wide. and um, so. I, but I'm looking, all I can see is horns. I got the scope up. I can't see a head. I, all I can see is this big rack. Mm. And um, so I got the uh, doe bleat thing in my pocket yep. and a grunt tube around my neck. Yep. So I'm like... And the way he's facing, it's like he's not going to come down in front of me. He's angled. You know, I could tell he came from my right to my left, over, going to my left over here. And I'm thinking he's in that trail. And he, he was. Um, so I, I'm like, oh, I'm going to try to grunt and see if he'll come down in front of me and you know, just try something. You know, it's going to be dark here in sure. 10 minutes, you know. So I, uh, I did the dobly. I did the the grunt thing and i i couldn't get him to move you know he just locked on to you know he couldn't see me i was there was so much thick stuff right. he couldn't see me i couldn't really see him he kind of like heard something and was like, uh, like yeah. yeah so i actually there was a little mound in front of me in between us and i so i ended up stood up on that chair that i was sitting in and trying to find something to shoot at and um, i still could just see the rack and I'm searching with a scope, and finally I can see an eyeball there. Yeah, he's not moving. You know, I I tried the grunt thing, and I tried the doe bleat like separate mm-hmm. times. He's still not moving. Yeah, and I'm like, I got to shoot at this thing. Boy, when they freeze, they can freeze too. Oh, yeah, they time. don't even yeah. move a muscle. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, aim for that eyeball, and um, shot, and I, you know, recoil the gun comes back, and I'm look and the rack is still there. <laughs> oh no okay. it, it hasn't moved you know <laughs> or it, it looked like it moved but not much and um uh, that's weird you know so i put another one in and i like well his head's got to be right about there and bang shoot again doesn't move so i'm like 
must be. I dropped him the first shot, you know, and I just. Tell me he got wound up in a bunch of brush and he was dead standing up. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. I, uh, so I go out of my chair and I go cut back to the trail. I'm going up and over this mound and I all of a sudden I got a better lane. He is standing there looking at me. No way. <laughs> and I just whipped the gun up. So he watched you. Wait, wait, wait. He watched you walk He must have thought there. that I was another buck. I don't sure. know how you shoot at a buck twice at yeah. 30, 40 yards. Right. Probably 30 yards. Well, I mean, again, you're, six, you're a 10 And he camp, doesn't right? move. Right. Maybe he's never been shot at before. <laughs> right. He probably hadn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I don't know if he was thought there was another buck there. He wasn't going to be intimidated. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes the, I'm right on the edge of a beaver pond. The beaver's whacking their tail against the oh, water. Oh, that's a good, uh, that's oh, a yeah. very Maybe. good point. Yeah. Sure, sure. But um, yeah, I had. But by Who that, knows, I'm right? flustered. Yeah. You know, I get I get up there and and I just whip the gun up and just shoot. Yep. And there's still a bunch of thick stuff between us. And he takes off, and I go over there and I got blood. He goes in the thick stuff. And um, I follow him a little ways, and it's, like, dark in the thick stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't have very good light. I get it on the radio. We had a bunch of us in the tent, four or five anyways. And uh, so I get on the radio and re relaying messages back to the tent, you know, because some of the guys are back in the tent already, you know, bring drinks, bring good flashlights, sure. you know. <laughs> yeah. I was a couple miles, a eh, mile and a half, I don't know. And you got a good look. There. You got a good look at him that time, right? I knew it was good, but mm -hmm. not like that good. Right, right. Um, so they come back, and we start after him. It, by now, it's like you know, six thirty, seven o'clock, and we start blood trailing them. And uh, we were jumping them up, so we're going along this other beaver. Well, not a beaver pond, but regular pond. Mm -hmm. And there's beavers out in there, like, splashing around and stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, no, this dude, he's bleeding good. Yeah. But uh, I'm like, he's going to go down in that water, and we aren't going to be able to find him, you know. So he starts parallel in the water, and, um, you know, we jump him up. We kind of hear him go, but now we got five of us traipsing through the woods in the dark right. with flashlights. So, sure. And um, so we kept bumping him, and he'd go a little ways, and we'd kind of lose the blood for a little bit. And then you'd pick it back up and, mm -hmm. you know, go another – quarter mile and bump him again and um now it's like i don't know seven o'clock or whatever and i'm finally i'm like you know you guys hang back just let me go and s sneak up on my own mm -hmm. so i did that i guess i jumped him i guess that was probably the last time because i ended up coming up to him and he was yeah done for you know expired, yeah. yeah but yeah it was a mess uh i hit him in the femoral artery <laughs> oh really just whipped up and you could and where it had gone in i definitely hit a bunch of brush because it had made a big you know inch and a half diameter hole where it went into yeah it. So i don't know if i had it on him good and it deflected right. or if you know just in the yeah so what time did you end up finding him at i think it was close to eight o'clock okay that's, was, not, that's not too bad then yeah, yeah yeah but those guys had brought the deer cart and so we had five we had to drag him away he didn't drag too easy he weighed yep. 185 that's so he had to yeah, a good he, size deer. i mean yeah. the size of his shoulders and, and his neck yeah. is just like whoa and what was the date on that did you say it was um i don't remember exactly but it was probably around the 10th right so 12th so somewhere. it sounds like you do like a lot of everything basically i mean you you sit you you still hunt on bear ground you track so yeah, you're doing a little bit of everything whatever you gotta you do you know whatever the conditions allow you know you I, gotta i always say like your best chance you know we, we actually just are in our most recent podcast we're saying like there's a lot of like um almost like I, don't, I guess you call them stereotypes like what you have to do to hunt in the big woods like some people are like oh i just track and, and maybe that's all they have time for but i'm most impressed by by guys like you who who can do everything and and you know you go through your facebook and see all your pictures and you're hunting out west and and doing all this other stuff and i'm sure that plays a big role also into coming yeah, back it coming all, back home and, and it meshing helps. it all together you yeah. know so it's just really impressive that that you do all that i think it's awesome makes the season yeah. longer too you get yeah. to enjoy an entire season instead of yeah it, it's great when the snow flies but to just wait for the snow to fly for me it would kill me because I'd want to have been out there right. before then. And I hunt. I enjoy hunting the bear ground as much as I do enjoy hunting on the snow. It's just a different phase. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. I don't hunting. as much. I mean, tracking's my thing. Oh, for sure. But right. I'm not gonna. Not See, I'm not. Hunt, I'm not know. very. Good I can't at let it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't. You know, sit home when I know the bucks sure. are running around crazy. You know, first week of November. So, yeah. You know. Right. I, I can sit home and 
work and do other things until about you know november 5th or whatever and, <laughs> yeah. and then you're like I okay gotta i gotta go woods, you know. <laughs> yeah. stuff is happening i i gotta ask you so not i mean you've gone you've killed mule deer you killed you've killed elk you've killed big bucks in the adirondacks where's your favorite place to hunt is it home or is it, it somewhere else yeah tent camp tent camp, know, it's just still, being deep in the woods yeah you know. it's funny you know it doesn't we, have to be tent camp it could be anywhere in but the adirondacks, what, yeah but you'd say it's the nice Adir- to be there already and you're you know you can free to go where you want you're not going to run into other people right you, know, you got you find a deer track nobody's going to cut you off you know yeah maybe it's re- one of your it's really guys that you're on really with, interesting but. you say that because you know we had todd mead in our podcast and i asked him the same thing i'm like where's your favorite place to hunt like would you rather be out west and in, in iowa in a stand or he said there's no place like home there's no place like hunting the adirondack so it's really interesting listening to someone who, like who i mean you've been out a lot of places right you've hunted a lot of places um, out basically west basically just colorado i've never well we did idaho one year for elk <clears throat> 2001 um but didn't eight of seven or eight of us went and we didn't right. have any luck um just kind of hit it wrong and uh but every other trip out west it's been it's like easier way easier than hunting the adirondacks <laughs> yeah, right you know, i believe it right yeah that it's still physically demanding and stuff oh, yeah. and but you get a mile in out there and you don't hardly see people you know unless it's an easy you know roadway or something to go yeah get right in there right but you don't want to go too far and shoot something like that and have to get it right out either mm, yeah they're a big animal and, <laughs> right. yeah especially that one right there i don't think i'd want to be lugging that thing out <laughs> yeah we took the deer carts out for that one and we had a choice to go bring them out uphill or down uphill there were like trails roadways with might have been easier with the deer carts we decided to go down we had a but there was no trail there yeah and uh yeah we uh got a flat tire on one of the deer carts and <laughs> oh no it was a couple hours after dark before we got out with them we had that dual wheeled deer cart with most of the meat in that and then the other deer cart too the one of my aluminum ones and uh yeah it was we, it was mostly downhill but then there's all these oh, up course. and down right. you know and you gotta you can't never go to you can't just take the easy one down to the road because there's private land there there's only like a narrow spot right of public where we had to come out with with them sure yeah sure yeah what time do we got over there brad well the bad news is we're running out of time but the good news is is that Ben, we didn't even scratch the surface yeah. on what we planned on <laughs> talking know, I'm, about. I'm this. sitting here and I so think that, did that, lose, did time lose just, one here? that time just flew by. No, I still I have both here. So. so we're just going to have to do a part two and probably a part three at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I got I lots did. of stories. A lot about tent camp. That, yeah, know, there's just so much we, we're just not going to be able to cover and, yeah. and I want to talk about it. So we're just going to yeah. get the good. We'll do it again. Yeah. We'll do it again but for I'll, sure. I, I want to end just by saying thanks for coming on and doing this. You know, Like I said, we've we've really, really been looking forward to this because we knew you'd have a bunch of stories and super related to what to what we do and you exceeded expectations oh yeah so absolutely so i don't usually talk a lot so it's probably most of my wife's heard me talk. <laughs> that's great <laughs> well, okay. well we can't wait to hear you I'm talk up. some more so <laughs> yeah but well, get thanks, me going man. on the right thing yeah I'll shut up yeah so. it's our greatest passion all right guys that's gonna do it that's uh, ben secor and you'll definitely be seeing him again and uh we'll catch you next time